The big news today in Japan is the government set to unveil this massive fiscal stimulus package. Tell us what do you think you would like to see in this package to help the economy as well as the banks? Well, uh, <coughs> I think it's uh, very, how shall I say, helpful for the uh, economies of Japan. And uh, uh, because of the, after the consumption tax hike, uh, there are some uh, who are afraid of the uh, downward of the economies. So to stimulate the uh, uh, upward uh, economies, it's, I think it's a uh, very good method. Uh, Otosan, this is David in, in Hong Kong. I'm right beside Yvonne here as yes. well. I guess just to build on I Yvonne's question there as well, uh, interest rates for the most part of the last 10 years in, in Japan have either been at zero or below zero as well. Do you think low rates have helped economic activity pick up? And how do you look at that? Because you're also sitting with the bank and low rates don't necessarily help your business. Well, uh, uh, it's uh, obviously affected uh, negatively uh, to the uh, banking society. And uh, uh, we already uh, have uh, some uh, negative effects on the negative interest policy. So if it will be uh, further deepen the negative interest policy, uh, it may affect uh, negatively to the, uh, especially the regional banks of Japan. So I think uh, BOJ should consider the uh, uh, negative impact of these uh, uh, policies when uh, they make the decision. And Otto san you know, when, when it comes to Sumitomo's bank revenue, uh, basically peaked out during the bubble era, uh, back in the 1990s, and, and now you're facing mm. difficulties, the structural difficulties in the economy, like an aging population. Uh, also, when it comes to the, the fintech mm -hmm. adoptions that we're seeing in, in the market as well, how do you think you should transform the bank after what we've been seeing here in, in the economy, as well as after the 2020 Olympics? Well, uh, I think the uh, uh, function of the basic uh, uh, basic function of the banks will remain unchanged. But uh, who will uh, do that and how they will do that will be changing. So we need to change ourselves to uh, become the, uh, uh, how shall I say, to, to, to have that, that kind of the functions in the future. So for that purpose, we should change by ourselves. In terms of the revenues, I think uh, uh, we should uh, pursue the uh, top line revenues. Uh, to increase in the uh, coming several uh, years, but uh, under the uh, domestic market, <coughs> it is uh, still under the uh, negative interest policy. It's quite hard to 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 improve the negative uh, top line revenues. So the engine for growth, in our case, is obviously the outer, outside of Japan. Uh, do you know, uh, Selena here in Beijing, Yvonne just mentioned some of those structural difficulties. In addition to that, you have a challenging macro environment, the economy shrinking following that tax hike, as well as the destructive typhoon. So what are the concrete plans to continue to grow amid that challenging backdrop? Well, uh, so in the uh, <coughs> society where the population is decreasing, it's quite hard to expect the rapid growth of the economies. But still, we have some demand uh, will be increasing in the Japanese market. For example, cashless is a new demand. So the total volume of the uh, uh, settlement will remain unchanged, but the methods of the settlement uh, will be changing, just like the automobile. So uh, the old type of the settlement uh, business will be disappeared. And then the new type of the uh, business will be arising. So we will pursue such kind of the uh, new challenge. Right. Uh, Otosan, just to build, I guess, on what you just mentioned there in trying to look outside Japan for, for growth, uh, what's your, I, I just want to clarify, what's your biggest market right now in terms of your revenues, and what do you see as your biggest revenue market, say, in 10 years' time? Well, uh, uh, we would like to extend our uh, current business, existing business, globally, especially in the U.S., because the U.S. is the uh, biggest market for us. But uh, on the top of that, 
we'd like to have some specific countries where we'd like to establish the second or third SMBC to pursue the uh, economical growth of that country. So in that sense, our global story has uh, two stories. The first story is to pursue the uh, existing business extension uh, globally. And then the second story is to establish the uh, new platform in the developing countries. Yeah, you mentioned about that. Uh, you just started this full banking service uh, in Indonesia by merging with BTPN this February. Uh, tell us a bit more about this business. What are the prospects now? Well, uh, we'd like to, to have the uh, second uh, SMFG in Indonesia. So uh, we will expand the commercial banking business. But on the top of that, we'd like to, to look for the uh, new uh, opportunities of the securities business, consumer financing, credit card business. And then uh, we'd like to expand the uh, scope of our business in Indonesia. In July, the bank signed an MOU to invest in SoftBank's second vision fund. Where do you stand right now in terms of that investment? Well, uh, now we have, the, uh, we have already reached to the target of the set one ratio. So in that sense, we'd like to, uh, we will have the uh, capital surplus in the coming years. So part of which should be used for the future expansion of the business. So uh, we have two targets of investment in the future. One is to, as I said, for the purpose of improving the ROE globally. So for that purpose, we'll invest in some business or portfolio, uh, which in a return is much better than the <coughs> existing line of the business. And the second target is uh, not the immediate eff effect, but uh, as I said, we'd like to have some future platform on which we would expand our business in specific countries. So for these two purposes, we may consider the uh, new investment. Uh, Otasan, in fact, just as you were speaking there, and we were just asking you about these fiscal measures um, out of the Japanese government, we now, in fact, right now know how large that stimulus is. We're talking the total size, 26 trillion yen. So that works out to be... Do the math. 200... 200 what's, what's the... A little exact? bit more than 230 billion. Yeah, right. yeah, about 235 billion, yeah. roughly speaking, U.S. dollars. Uh, Otosan, your, your initial thoughts, is, do you think that, that that size of fiscal help from the finance ministry is going to help boost activity in Japan? Well, sorry, uh, what's your point? <coughs> oh, I was just asking... Because we now understand how mm. large the fiscal spending measures will be out of, out of the finance ministry. Mm. It's 26 trillion mm -hmm. Japanese yen. Your initial thoughts, sir? Mm. Mm. Yeah, yes, yes no, it's not, I think it's not very huge. I don't okay. have a very right. uh, correct answer instead. Yeah. Yeah, I guess we'll have to wait and see really what the effects will be. Uh, final question, I guess, for you. I'm going to ask you very yeah. straight up. We talked about Indonesia. Is there another bank anywhere in the world that you're looking to buy? <laughs> well, uh, as I said, uh, we direct to, to focus on the uh, developing countries where the, uh, we can expect the GDP, GDP growth. In that sense, we are uh, looking uh, for another targets in the uh, surrounding countries like the Philippines or Vietnam, or in the future, maybe in India. 